And Everton legend Leon Osman is on the line. Evening, Leon. How's it going? Good evening, fellas. Looking well, Lion. Looking well there. <laughs> Dressed up just for you, Kev. Good man, good man. <laughs> so then, Leon, we'll get on to Everton, but word has it, you have first-hand experience of Kevin Kilban's skating talent. <laughs> <laughs> I do, and of all the things Kev could probably do, I'm, I'm really amazed he's chosen to go on the ice. <laughs> it was, uh, <laughs> uh, was, what was it? It was about 15 years ago now, Kev, wasn't it? And uh, Yeah. Okay, we, I think it was fair to say we'd had a couple of drinks before we went on there, which probably isn't wise. Yeah, that's but, true. Uh, Can't condone Kev's that, skating, Leon. Well, what I remember of, uh, <laughs> of Kev going on the ice, it was, uh, it was one footstep, his feet were in the air, blood all down of his arm, and then straight back off again. So, uh, yeah. I'm amazed. <laughs> After seeing that, Kev, you're actually going to go back yeah. on the ice. And we actually had the, we had a, we had a, the club doctor. I th I, th I think J JT still at, at Everton now, isn't he, Ozzy? Yeah, it was JT. No, he's not anymore. Oh, is he not? But he was he was the the club doctor. It was his first trip away. It was his first pre season with us, and he was just looking at me in amazement, like. What are you doing? You're a professional footballer. What on earth are you doing on ice skates? And to be fair to Ozzy, he was very good. Ozzy was skating everywhere, you know, pirouettes and everything on the ice. He was flying. <laughs> but the, the club doctor could not believe the, stupid, the stupidity on me getting on the ice. Why didn't they ask you to do dancing on ice, Leon? Everton legend, uh, you know England what? international. <laughs> Did you turn it down? <laughs> I'm still waiting on the call. Kev gets all the best calls these days. I'm booked in to mind his dog for the next month. <laughs> <laughs> So, so literally, you walk on the ice, yeah. you go head over heels, you somehow, and you were laughing earlier when I was talking about the potentially life-changing injuries you could suffer, yeah. you somehow rip your arm apart with the skate. Well, it was, it, was, it was a minor cut on the elbow, that's what it was. It and the, wasn't the skate, he went that high into the air, the impact of him landing on the floor just bashed his elbow up, and he didn't actually stand up to get back off the ice, he crawled, <laughs> he crawled <laughs> That's true, I think, yeah. I think that is true, yeah. <laughs> right, how, how's news of uh, Kilban's dancing and ice stint gone down in the uh, former Everton players' WhatsApp group? <laughs> oh, fantastically well, to be honest. We're, uh, we're all, we've, helped, we've got a sweep going. Uh, how many weeks in before he goes out? Um, everyone's desperate to get one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's very see. Harsh. Very Let's, harsh, very harsh. Let us see, let us see. We could spend all night talking about Kilban on the ice, but we should talk about Everton because it's been another really slow start to the season. Just the two wins from their opening six games, just the five goals from their opening six matches, and it feels, after all the money they spent during the summer, Leon, that already there's some pressure coming on Marco Silva. He just about did enough in the last three months of last season to win the fans over and get that investment and the opportunity to spend that money. What's gone wrong? Why haven't they been able to kick on with all that attacking talent they brought in this summer? Well, again, you know, you, you talk about the end of last season and the, the momentum and the, the results that uh, Marco Silva and the Everton team got going into uh, the, the close season, but it, it was mostly down to that home form. That home form was, was magnificent, beating, um, you know, the likes of Manchester United and, and, and the other top team, Chelsea and Arsenal and Liverpool, all came to, to go to some park and um, you know, they were all sent packing on their way pretty much and you know, there's so much reliance on, on Marco Silva's team to, to win their home games because the, the away form has been poor mm. but the optimism was there going into this season that going with that confidence that the season could be started well home and away but again, the away form at the start of this year has, uh, has left a lot to be desired going away to, to Aston Villa, poor performance and, mm. and getting beat against a newly promoted club, then getting beat away at Bournemouth, and then suddenly um, there's an awful lot of pressure on your home form. Uh, again, you, you feel like you have to win your home game. So one poor game at home against Sheffield United, and suddenly it's uh, the pressure mounts. Can I just ask you, Lean, about that away form then? What, what in your mind then is the reason why Everton can't seem to get that away form right? Oh, geez, well, do you know what, Kev? I think I'd had a call to go help out if I knew the actual answer. Um, I, I just, I, they just seem a bit soft away from home. You know, you go there and, uh, well, sorry, you watch the team and, and, you know, yourself that teams that generally do well away from home have got a real good spine of, of attitude. The, uh, the leaders, the character that you go there and you, you, by hook or by crook, you don't get beat. You, you know, you might not come away with a victory, but you don't get beaten. 
the opening day against Crystal Palace, I thought that, you know, that may be a sign of things to come, despite the attacking prowess in that game not being great. Uh, but since then, it just seemed a little bit soft away from home. And um, certainly when Everton go a goal down at the moment, you don't you don't see the, the ability from the team to recover. Um, and that's been an issue. One of the other issues is, well, clearly on one end they're not scoring enough goals, but at the other end, the amount of goals they're conceding from set pieces. So since the start of last season, they've conceded 20 goals from corners and free kicks more than any other Premier League side. But you were looking at this earlier, Kevin. It's not just mm. since the start of last season. This is a trait of Marco Silva teams that basically his side, since he's come into the Premier League, concede a goal from set pieces, not including penalties, every second game. Yeah. 86 matches, 43 goals conceded from set yeah, pieces. Yeah, I was saying that it's, it's not just that Everton were... Considering that they've got decent decent mm. attackers of the ball, you look at Yerry Mina, if you look at Michael Keane, they've got, they have got a little bit of height in the side. That is a terrible stat for Marco Silva. And I'd, I'd seen his sides at Hull do the same. I'd seen his sides at, uh, at Watford do the same. 43 goals in 86 games, that, that's, that's extremely poor and the, the other managers that would be around him have got nowhere near that, level, that sort of level. So that's something that Everton, when you watch them, they look like they're going to concede mm. from every wide free kick and every corner that's going into the penalty area. What's your sense of it, Leon? And uh, you'd be around the club quite a bit in terms of how responsible Marco Silva is for that on the training ground. Is he very much involved? in that set-piece setup, or is he trusting his coaches and maybe putting his trust in the wrong people? Well, ultimately, you know, whoever um, takes set-pieces, whether they spend three hours on them or, or three minutes on them, the, the book always stops with the manager, and, um, you know, he's the person who ends up holding the responsibility. But Everton, and even the previous clubs we were just talking about, the conceding the goals, you know, Watford and Hull, he generally likes to do zonal marking, um, and there's been a lot of talk with Pep Guardiola does zonal marking as well. And you know Manchester City's percentage of conceding goal is right up there. Um, and at the moment, you just look across the league, and generally zonal marking doesn't seem to work. But mm. that's the way Marco Silva likes to do it. And um, you know, I think towards that there was a period at the start of last season, Everton conceded a lot of goals, but then for about three months, that seemed to, to be shored up. It seemed as if that. The, the amount of time spent on the training field really was paying off. But you know, the start of the season again conceding a lot of goals, and you know, with letting the likes of Phil Jagielka leave the club, not being able to get Kurt Zuma back after thinking that potentially that was going to be a, a a deal done, and suddenly, um, you know, the, your options at the back are, are not what they were, and you know, I'm I'm thinking maybe that may might have something to do with it. And it does feel as though he finds himself in a very difficult situation with this squad because there's a lot of leaks suddenly coming out of that Everton dressing room. And you would imagine, and I would assume, that when you have issues like this from set pieces, it takes a lot of work on the training ground. It's pretty dull. It's not very interesting. But you're standing there. You're working on your positioning. You put the hours in and you hope that you'll get the rewards and suddenly you're better at defending set pieces. Yet one of the stories coming out of the dressing room is that the players aren't happy with the length of the training sessions, that they go on too long, that he isn't able to motivate his players during those training sessions. I, but I think you would have had that thought, and Leon and I would have experienced it, certainly if you're looking at a manager like David Moyes, when, when, when we used to lose a game on a weekend, or if we lost mm. a game on a weekend, you know full well kind of the week you were going to get extra extra time in the training ground, extra time on set pieces, extra time on the, extra time on the shape of the team. It's kind of a standard thing, really. That that's what most clubs would do because you're trying to rectify it, aren't you? You're trying to get it right. And yeah, it isn't the, the ideal training that you would want to be doing day in day out because sometimes you, certainly now the way that the game is, how physical the game is, you'd feel as though you need to be working on the physical side of it more often in shorter maybe bursts. So. I can imagine, but that's just a standard. That's the way that it is. Everton are conceding badly or conceding goals at a bad rate from corners and set pieces. It needs to be sorted. Now, just just touching on something that Leon said there about managers that like to deploy a, a zonal system. I, I'm not in favour of it personally, but if it's done right, then it works. But mm. clearly Everton aren't doing or working on that system and it doesn't look to it doesn't look from the, my eye watching them that they're actually covering each other's back in the zones across the across the eighteen yard box and that's where they're coming unstuck a lot of the time. Leon, from Marco Silva's point of view, when he's seeing these stories coming out about 
the unhappiness with the training sessions. He likes the players to stay in a hotel. It's all this kind of stuff that when you're winning matches, right. literally nobody ever hears of. But now that they're losing them, the players obviously feel that, well, and maybe this actually says a lot about Everton as well. And it's something every time we talk to Seamus Coleman after an Everton game, if they've lost, then he'll always come out and he'll do his interview and he'll talk about the character within the squad. Mm -hmm that actually the very fact that these sort of stories are coming out would make you question the character in that Everton squad. Well, they're certainly not the stories that you want to, to, to be leaked. You know, the manager won't be, won't be best pleased that this type of thing is getting out. But you're right. You know, it's, it's all about winning and, and losing. If, if things are going well, then the players don't seem to mind doing anything. The attention to detail, the amount of time spent is all helping you to win games. But, you know, if you're, if you're finding yourself out there for long periods, say on a Friday when you play Saturday and then you don't win, you're always looking for an excuse. And if it's, <clears> you know, that I was a bit tired from, from all the standing round the day before, you know, then players will, will try to use that. Kev was, Kev was always trying to use that, weren't you, Kev, the day before a game when we were doing set pieces? <laughs> that you always, uh, always stood around a bit too long, but you were generally on no, the... No, that's, uh, that's because I wasn't in the team, Ozzy, that was why. I was going to say, you were generally on the bib team, weren't you, helping us do set pieces? <laughs> They've obviously spent an insane amount of money as well over the last few years yeah. and haphazard at best. Some players have worked. Jordan Pickford for 25 million has established himself as the England goalkeeper. Yeah. Richarlison maybe. Is the jury still out on Richarlison? Generally puts in a good shift, contributes with goals. But like 45 million on Gilfie Sigurdsson, who didn't make it at Tottenham, has probably shown why he hasn't had that level of consistency for a top six club. Like, Andre Gomez, we, when we saw him at the start of last season, raving about his yeah. consistency, that this was the player that would unlock everything for Everton. And he's now been sort of drawn into this malaise of some games he does it, some games he doesn't. Like, from your point of view, Leon, like, what snaps Everton out of this cycle that they can put together a consistent level of performance over the course of, of, the, course of the season? Well, you need someone within the dressing room to to snap you out of it you need a good performance you need to you need leaders within the dressing room driving the team forward at every single moment of every single game and um, you know I, I think Fabian Delft was a, a great addition over the summer having lost Phil Jagielka to get that experience and that uh, character and that kind of leader out there on the field because I think he will help but you're right that the word you use with with Everton and the players at the moment is consistency because you know you mentioned Richarlison Blows hot and cold. Some weeks he's, he's terrific. Some weeks he's uh, he, he's anonymous. And you know, pretty much all of the players you went through, they're the Everton team that consistency getting them to perform. We know that they can perform at a, at a really high level. You know, Gilfie Sigurdsson is probably the, the highest profile at the moment. That it's, it's just probably not doing enough out there on the field to justify his his central role. He's number ten. You know, and you need him to do an awful lot going forward and defensively, creating goals, scoring goals. And uh, he's just not in good form at the moment. When you see, as you did at the end of last season, that these players playing with confidence, these players playing with momentum, you know, breathing that from each other, feeling it, uh, being led by players on the field, then you get a, a really high level of performance. But at the moment, it just seems like everyone's waiting for somebody else in the team to, to drive the team forward so they can all follow. Leon, across the course, you know, you've been around Everton basically your whole life really, certainly your, your, your adult life anyway, but across the course of the Premier League, only Tony Cotty, Andrew Kinchelskis, uh, the, the Yak, um, uh, Romelu Lukaku and Romelu Lukaku have scored more than 15 goals in, in a season. Romelu Lukaku is the only player that's actually broke 20 for Everton. So, you know, we're going back a long time here and I'm saying that you've played in a lot of, a lot of sides where it has had to be maybe sitting and, 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 uh, and maybe soak up a bit of pressure in games. But how much of a problem is that for Everton, given, as Nathan spoke about before, the amount of money that they've spent, that there's nobody within Everton's ranks that you can guarantee is going to get you 15, 20 goals? Well, you're right. It's, it's a huge problem. And, you know, you talk about the, the, the players that have done it. And I, I was playing there for 14, 15 seasons and... I only had two players in, in that list that managed to uh, to score over 15 goals. It shows the, yeah. uh, the importance and it comes with expectations as well. You know, Everton now having um, got the new owners talking about a new stadium, they're spending a, a, more money than we ever dreamed possible going back years ago. I mean, yeah. David Moyes was, was managing on a shoestring and, and getting players in, whereas Everton are now spending money, have been spending money for three or four seasons. So the expectations are, 
are higher. The expectations are to, to be battling for top six and, you know, maybe in a year or two's time, battling for top form and, and uh, winning trophies. But unfortunately, you need, you need a, a 15, 20 goal a season man to be able to, to, to do that. And, um, you know, there's been a, a bit of expectation on, on Calvert-Lewin's shoulders, but he hasn't quite materialised in that way. He's a good all-round player, not quite clinical enough that you, you're expecting to get your 20 goals a season. And Moise Keane, who showed a lot of promise over in Italian football, as, uh, just as most young players do when they come over to the Premier League, looks like he's going to take a, a month or two to get to the, to the, uh, the pace of the Premier League. Seamus Coleman was given the captaincy at the start of the season. Now... How much you read into that, considering Phil Jagielka had been the club captain for previous seasons and was in and out of the side. But it feels as though that these are a big few weeks for Coleman because Jibril Sidibe came in in the League Cup. He's looks as though he's sort of hitting some sort of fitness where he's a real live option for Marco Silva. How much pressure do you think is Coleman under right now? A, a, a bit of pressure, you know, as, as you say, bringing in uh, Sidibe. Uh, I think from Monaco. So, you know, you're talking about a, a, a player that has quality, but Seamus Coleman, you know, I, I can't speak highly enough of him. He's still a, a top quality player. He's He is probably the leader in that dressing room. He's the guy that, you know, certainly has a word to say to the other players when, uh, when they don't meet his standards, which is terrific, you know, to have met the young man when he was uh, in 2009, I think, when he, when he first came across. He was shy and uh, timid and... Certainly not the character he's become, and it's great to have seen that he's now Everton captain, a leader, and, and justifiably so. And I think he's, I think he's got a uh, another couple of seasons in in the Everton first team. Certainly as captain, he'd probably be managed a little bit better now he's getting a bit older. But uh, you know, he'd certainly be my first choice fullback. Do you think Marco Silva will be able to ride this one out? Well, the next few weeks are are precious, really. You know, you look at the weekend. I don't think that. You know, too much. It's difficult to say. Everton have to perform against Manchester City, but there's not many people out there would expect um, Everton to, to beat Manchester City at the weekend. We're talking about a, an unbelievably good team. Um, and then, you know, there's big fixtures, Burnley, West Ham, and I think Brighton come mm. after that. And, you know, I think it's it's vital that at least two wins come out of these next four games. And But, you know, as I've said before, Everton are capable of it. They've got some, some top quality players, a real attack and threat. I, I think it will be really hit the ground running. He looks a, a good acquisition, even for the price. Him and Bernard are linking up well at the moment. Richarlison, as again, blows hot and cold, but can certainly get you the goals you need. And I think it's uh, it's vital that, that those really take the games by the scruff of the neck and uh, lead everything forward. Leon, great stuff. You don't have any video, do you, of that time Kev fell in his arse on the ice skating? I think that was a time You know before. what? I wish I did. Yeah. I so wish I did. I could, could describe it so vividly. I can see it in my mind. The, the moment he went into the air, but unfortunately, no, I've not got a video. <laughs> It's in slow motion, this yeah. perfect collapse. I think, it, I think it was just before the, the camera phones, the real video oh. phones. I think that's what it was. You just got away with murder that. because of that, Kev. Yeah, I did, I did, yeah. Leon Osmond, thanks a lot. We'll talk to you soon. Cheers, Cheers Leon. Thanks, Thank mate. You. See you again.